I thought Master was different. Big finish time, and as selected by my wonderful supporters over on Patreon, join now, help make the show better. I'll get the plug out of the way early. I'll still do it again at the end. Anyways, um, this time I'm tackling Omega, um, which is of course kind of a, uh, a little bit part of a trilogy. They're not actually um, story-wise linked. Uh, as far as like the continuing narrative or, or anything like that, but you know the, it, there is a thematic relevance between three episodes, those being uh, Master, which I've already done, Omega, and Davros, which I'll get to. So this one, like Master before it, focuses pretty seriously on a noted villain of classic Doctor Who and uses that as the title character. Now this one, this is a fifth Doctor adventure, so we've got Peter Davison back, and it's, oh boy, I, I, I'm trying to think of how one describes this story. Um, okay, here we go. So plot-wise, what we have is we have a basically a tourist trap. This thing that kind of, this ship that just kind of goes through historically relevant portions of the galaxy. And, you know, you have guides talking about what went on. You also have actors reenacting, you know, playing the parts of certain key historical figures and all of that. And this particular ship that this story is centered on happens to be traveling around where the character of Omega uh, was basically lost to the antimatter universe. So I suppose I should give a bit of context for that uh, for anyone who doesn't know the character from Classic Who. So Omega was one of the Time Lords who actually kind of predates the term Time Lord, but he helped his actions, his science, his study helped gain the Gallifreyans the power of time travel. Him and Rassilon and the other, which I'm not sure ever got established in canon as existing and definitely never panned out as to what they were going to do with that, so I'm not even going to touch that. But he was basically kind of sacrificed. Not... It, it, not necessarily deliberately, at least he certainly didn't know what was gonna to happen to him. So in the process of kind of harnessing this dying star um, and everything that was going on, he was lost to the antimatter universe, which is actually where we first encountered him back in um, the three doctors where he first turned up and he then later will return in Ark of Infinity. Basically, he felt abandoned by the Time Lords. He felt abandoned and and forgotten and he's stuck in this place that yes he's basically the overlord of but it's just him and he goes mad and he wants revenge and he wants to come back to our universe but uh, you know when matter and antimatter meet it's not good so him coming back has never really been a, an option and so that's that's the premise under which the doctor has defeated him previously so this, like Master before it, well, I say before it, that's, you know, I don't know the order that these were released in. So before it, for me, in my listening order, um, it delves into the history and gives additional information and details on the background of this character. One thing that I do like about this one, uh, particularly if I'm gonna compare it to Master, is because of the way that we are granted these pieces of information and who they're coming from and how they're being relayed and what's being said and the circumstances, it's a little bit like the killing joke in that the source is so unreliable, not necessarily deliberately, but because Omega's nuts. He's, he's off his rocker. I um, mean, that's demonstrated in story here. That's not just like extra context. That it means that if at the end of this, what gets implied is something that doesn't sit well with you, 
you actually don't have to accept it. You can choose to believe that, okay, maybe there's something like that, but like it, it, his version of it has got to be jumbled because his mind's a mess. And I like that that is in there and you have that ability to adjust your own headcanon around the information that's given in there. I would have appreciated that in something like Master where what they laid out, I kind of still have very mixed feelings about in general and I'm not entirely sure if I like. Whereas this... Again, they kind of did something that I'm not sure I like as far as the specifics of the backstory, but I also don't have to accept it. So the fact that I'm not sure that I like it isn't as much of a detriment to me in this particular story. So anyways, coming back to the plot, <laughs> I've gone off on a tangent way early. Um, not too much into spoilers, I don't think. That was all kind of general stuff I was talking about. So coming back to the plot, so you've got this ship that's that's sort of touring this area and you have, you know, actors portraying Rasslon and his assistant who um, supposedly betrayed him and, and I'm sorry, not Rasslon, Omega. Rasslon doesn't appear in this, but he's, he's a figure in Omega's past, so his name comes up. Uh, so you've got uh, all this going on and obviously the doctor shows up and then you start to realize that Omega is again kind of making his presence in our universe known in some way and the doctor has to figure out how he's going to deal with that and there's some interesting shifts in terms of uh, the character of Omega himself certainly he is he's handled differently and it doesn't come across as um just inconsistent writing because as i said the character his brain is so addled <laughs> at this point that and 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 you know he goes through these crazy mood swings and it, it really it, it feels justified the ways in which this differs from how we've seen uh, omega previously the, the the guy voicing him I, and i am forgetting the name um if i remember i'll put it up right there but the guy voicing him, he uh, he did it for Ark of Infinity, and I like his work here better than in Ark of Infinity. I think it's because he does Omega better when Omega is calmer. When Omega gets really upset and does the big, booming, bellowing voice, Doctor, I will destroy you! He's just kind of generic. But when he gets to play those calmer moments, which there are actually plenty of, it's not like it's an exception, he brings a lot of depth and a lot of nuance to it. So he, I, I do think his performance here is better because the way the character is written plays to what he is able to do as a performer better, whereas the big bellowing moments are, they're just that. They're big and bellowy and kind of generic. Um, Peter Davison as the doctor in this one is a little odd for me. He's, he's good and he works, but for some reason I kept thinking I was listening to the sixth doctor. I don't know if it's the writing or just sort of the, the way the characterization is done or something in the performance, but he came off a bit more flippant, a bit more dismissive, a bit more cruel in his snarkiness. Um, that seemed more sixth doctor-ish to me than, than I'm used to seeing. Uh, from Davison's Doctor. I don't know if that's just me being, I don't know if anyone else got that vibe at all, or if I just read something weird into this performance, but I, I did keep thinking like, this is Fifth Doctor, right? Because he's, and it's not like his voice sounded like Colin Baker. Um, although, you know, as <laughs> as he's gotten, as they've both gotten older, they, they kind of, uh, they're sounding a little bit similar um, versus how they used to sound. Uh, when they first played the roles, but more in that the the tone and the delivery reminded kept reminding me of Colin Baker, and which was weird to me. And 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 I'm not sure it's a bad thing. And actually, especially for some of the stuff we we find out later about what's going on, it can also probably be explained in kind of the similar way I talked about before. Um, I can't get too much more into detail about that though. Um, so I'll probably get into spoilers in a bit. If I had like a, a, a something that I would actually level as a criticism on this thing, it's that it is not 
easy to keep on top of the twists because the the nature of the antimatter universe and the bridge between them and sort of this rift that the that the characters are literally orbiting the it it causes all sorts of befuddlements and uh and, and things uh, of the characters and it means we get a whole lot of sudden turns and sudden revelations some of which turn out to be real some of which turn out to be not some of which are fake out some of which then get reversed so trying to keep track of who's doing what who's aligned with whom and why becomes difficult this, this is um, this is not one to listen to, say, while doing work or to listen to while driving. Like, you need to sit down and concentrate just on this because otherwise you, you're going to, like, focus on something else for, like, a minute and, you know, just kind of kind of listening and, like, properly tune back in and go, wait, what now? How did we get here? Just because in terms of the the shifting relationships and the characters and, and, and the motivations, it it just happens a lot it it happens frequently and and oftentimes they kind of pile on top of each other and i don't mind um had being asked to engage my brain and really follow what's going on but that this seemed like even even within that premise this wasn't like fun it was, it was like if it, it felt like work I don't mind having to pay attention if it feels rewarding. This felt this felt more like homework. And it it did take me out of it a little bit. Overall though, this was this was a good um a good audio and a good piece of work. I I would probably I would rate this above master. Um although again, that that uh has more to do with sort of uh, my own preferences and hang-ups as a Doctor Who fan. There were very specific things that were done in Master with the narrative that I really didn't care for. Um, but that was still a good thing. I, I liked this one a little bit better just because even though it had some some iffiness, I like if if you were if you were to ask me which one would I rather listen to again, it would be this one. Uh, so there and there's a lot of interesting like little tidbits and nuggets and specific things that happen, but that's all a little bit more spoilery. So I'm now going to get into spoilers. So getting into spoilers and some of the specifics, one of the aspects I really enjoyed about this is that it, there, it has emphasis on the importance and the power of stories um, because that, that, that's something that kind of keeps coming up in terms of Omega's concern about how he is remembered and how his story gets told um, and his, you know, offer and sort of his offering up di different versions of things, telling a story and then telling the doctor that's not true. And the, you know, when the doctor kind of pushes him, pushes him on that, he said, well, what does it matter? If it's a lie, what does it matter what the lie is? And there's some some interesting back and forth between the characters on that topic. And it, it's, a, it's a theme, it's a subject that I like in general. I'm kind of a sucker for it if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. I, and I also love the, like, the little bit about magic, like that magic stops working as soon as you can explain it. If you understand it, it doesn't work. It only works when you can't explain it. Like that's that's kind of neat. Uh, that's a cool sentiment, and it's something that would have been dis a disconnect for Doctor Who because Doctor Who's not a show with magic um, generally. But it's one of those things that that does get covered up as you realize that the Omega that we're dealing with, well, <laughs> the Doctor who we have for the first three out of four um, episodes of this thing. Um, and Omega are one and the same that he is still that he's torn in this um, body that he copied off the doctor back in Arkham Infinity. So once you realize that and, and then suddenly things like the talk about magic make more sense because, you know, it's it's a guy arguing with himself and not even realizing that he's doing it. And that's sort of where things come in and what I talked about earlier in terms of how I'm okay with things like the implications of the master actually causing a genocide and wiping out this planet 
um, by accident rather than Omega having done it intentionally or, you know, by not intentionally, but um, making a choice that he knew would result in that. Like that's a that's a twist that I wouldn't like if the narrative forced me to believe it to be true. But again, the sources are so questionable um, on, on pretty much all of this. And, you know, everyone keeps having their brain addled and taken over by other people and like they're all they're all acting weird and they're all saying strange stuff at various points i don't have to accept that as fact and i choose not to for the record not just because it's something that i don't think the doctor should have on his on his back but also because i don't like tying up the doctor into omega's origin there's no reason to do that it doesn't add anything it just it makes the doctor more omniscient which is not something i like which and i alluded to this is why i'm really glad um they never got to to conclude the story that was eventually supposedly going to reveal the doctor to have been the other the other gallifreyan from the beginning of time lord society who helped create everything like i i would have hated that if they'd actually gotten around to it because, and I've talked about this in other videos, I don't like the doctor becoming so embroiled that he's basically the end all be all of like all of time and space. I don't want that from him. And and I feel like um, tying him into Omega's origin story effectively it is too close to that same thing. Um, but some of the other things, I wrote down some notes in terms of like little moments and little things that, um, that I thought were, were nifty or cool. The, the, Palix, um, Omega, before he was called Omega, gets referred to as a time plumber. And initially I'm like, that's dumb. Would you just stick time on the front of something? But then he actually gets elaborated on a little bit that he's clearing out the vortex tubes, all the spare bits of time that are stuck in there. And I actually stopped and thought, that's really cool. Like this weird blue collar logistical job that has to exist for time travel that i mean that's like thinking that's like stopping and thinking about a, a tardis mechanic like that's there's just something that really appeals to me about this you know this high concept really advanced society that still has these blue blue collar jobs that are just a little bit different because of the way everything works there um i i being someone who enjoys theater and acting when I get the chance. I did like um, the little bits of things like real history is less popular than the dramatized version because um, it's not as entertaining, which actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. If you were to go back and actually watch any of the major historical events that get dramatized all the time in TV, films, books, etc., they would seem really low-key and really anticlimactic more often than not. Um, but also the whole thing where the, the actors can't be androids because of because of equity um, and, and basically the actors union <laughs> ensuring that they can't they can't be replaced with androids. I love that. Um, there's also an interesting touch. It's said that the Time Lords can't visit their own history. Now, it's said it's forbidden, which to me says it's a rule as opposed to like they've actually put deliberate blockades and restrictions to keep them from doing that but that that is something that i i hadn't heard said before and makes a lot of sense i mean the doctor i've heard the doctor say he can't cross his own timeline because that's a paradox situation but like the idea that time lords can't visit time lords society you know history makes a lot of sense because of you know a potential domino effect of messing around because they have the power to do that now so i thought that was a cool detail that has probably shown up in other um material but it's my first it's my first time encountering it so there you go the whole um angle between the the woman whose name is now escaping me and omega like the sort of weird prison romance like you know when women become pen pals with with criminals in prison and fall in love with them it was it was weird and i don't know if i bought it like i how did how did that even start and why why was she in love with him i don't know that that felt like something underexplored that felt like something that needed more justification than it got um but her performance was fine this this is this was a writing issue um 
Oh, and I did find it interesting, the, the whole idea of um, other Time Lords from the future being desperate to preserve the Doctor's hero reputation. There's something quite intriguing about that because it... You'd think that would feed the, well, this makes the Doctor like the most important thing ever. But it doesn't necessarily, because it's just to the side enough, because what, what they're actually saying is the reputation of the Doctor is one of the most important things ever, which is not quite the same thing. And that's just that little sidestep from something that I wouldn't like to make it just different enough that I'm like, okay, okay, I can go with that. So those are, just, you know, sort of the extra little details. The conclusion is the same. The, you know, it's what I said before I got into spoilers. This was good. I enjoyed it, and I'll probably listen uh, to it again. I have a feeling, if I, if, coming back to comparing it to Master again, I think Master is a tighter package. It's just the things that I take issue with, with in Master, I have a harder time sort of getting over than the things that bug me about Omega. So, but I do think Master's probably a better written and tighter product overall. I still like Omega a little bit better myself. So, Omega from Big Finish, have you heard it? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. You know the stuff. I mentioned the Patreon already, but there's also the Twitter and you can buy t-shirts and, and there's a podcast that I'm trying to get up and running on a regular basis again. I might have actually started doing that by the time this airs. Who knows? Check out the links down in the description and find out for yourself. And until next time, this council is adjourned.